Hello, this is Mr. Bennett. This video is going to introduce word processing with Google Docs. And we're just going to go over the very basics of using a word processor. The more advanced features of word processing will um, be in another video. So first of all, what is a word processor? It's a program or an application on a computer device that allows you to um, write words and documents that are mostly made up of words that you can save for using later or for sharing with other people. So the, um, the one that uh, we're going to go over in this video is called Google Docs and it's part of um, the Google Education Suite. If you're logged into Clever, you'll find an icon for it right here. It's a blue page with the corner turned down and some white lines on it. Okay, and if you just click on it, it will launch the um, starting page for Google Docs. And at the top, you'll see what are called some templates that allow you to start new documents with some things already done on it for you. And um, below that, you'll see documents that you may have already written and saved. All right, so for now, we just want to start a blank document. So this very first template says blank. We just click on it, and that will give us a document that has no information in it or settings um, really set up at all for us, just the very basics. Um, we can see our blinking cursor right here where it shows us um, where we'll start typing. If we were to type, we have a um, toolbar above that and a menu bar. And then right here in the top left corner is the file name for our document. And the very first thing we should always do when we begin a word processing document or any kind of new file in any kind of um, editor that we might use, whether it's for graphics or slideshows or word processing documents, is give your document a good name. And Google always defaults to untitled document, which isn't very helpful at all. So we should always change that to something that will help us remember what the document was for at another time. So I'm going to put um, Google Docs demonstration. Okay, now if this was an assignment um, about a biography for a famous person in history, you might put biography of famous person or biography of Abraham Lincoln, if that was your famous person for your file name. But always change untitled document to a good file name. Okay, now, like I said, you, um, have your blinking cursor right here. That is where your words will begin to type on the page. Okay, so I just typed in, this is just a demonstration of Google Docs. And if you look, you'll see the scroll bar. And if you scroll down, this whole white area in the center represents your piece of paper. Okay, and the gray areas on the side would be like your tabletop if this were on your desk. Okay, right here we have a setting that lets us see more of our desk. If we zoom out, it'll make our piece of paper look smaller, like we're um, getting high above our desk and see, and like if we were standing up instead of sitting down at our desk. And that gives us a sense for what our entire page looks like. But that's not a good way to see what we are typing right at any given moment. So uh, when we want to actually start typing, we might zoom in closer to 100% or 125%. Or if we really wanted to make it big, we could make it 150% or even bigger. Okay. Now, if I were to start typing right now, it would start typing right there after the period because that's where my cursor was. So I'm gonna delete that. And let's say I wanted to reword this. I didn't wanna say this is just a demonstration of Google Docs. I wanted to say this is a demonstration of Google Docs. So I'm gonna take my mouse pointer 
click there where uh, the A is and it makes my blinking cursor move to that position. And then I can hit the backspace key to delete the word just. Now it says this is a demonstration of Google Docs. Now if I started typing there right now, I would start typing into the middle of my sentence and that's not what I want to do. I want to type a new sentence. So I'm going to click with my mouse and place my cursor after the period, type a space because periods always have a space afterward, and then I'll write a new sentence. I hope you enjoy it and learn from it. Exclamation point. All right. Now, in another video, we'll talk about how we can do things like change the color of what we type or change the size of what we type or underline it, do all sorts of other things, center it on the page. But for right now, we're just concentrating on how to start a Google Doc, how to type into one and how to save it, close it, reopen it, print it, the very basic things. So. Let's say I was done for now. I might want to work on it later, but I wanted to make sure it was saved. Well, when we're working on Google Docs, it tells us right there whether it's been saved or not. Google Docs tries to save your work all the time while you're working on it. If you watch this, that, this area as I type a new sentence, Watch how it automatically saves my work as I type. And I made a spelling error there, so I'm going to fix it. Okay, now you can see it says saving and then it changes to all changes saved in Drive. So as I type, it knows I'm working more on it and it waits until I stop for a moment and saves it automatically for me. Now, if you're new, using a different word processing program, like for example, Microsoft Word, you might need to go over to the file menu and find an option here that says save and manually with your mouse, save your document. But in Google Docs, that is done for us already automatically. So that is a really great thing about Google Docs. All right, now, how could I print this? I've, I've typed my document. I have made sure it's saved and now I want to print it. Well, there's a couple of ways to access the printing um, tool. One is on the toolbar. There's a little icon button of a printer. And if you hover your mouse, it says print. If I click on that, it will show me what my document looks like. It'll ask me what printer I want to print it to and then it will allow me to go ahead and print it. Now, right now, it um, instead of actually printing it on a piece of paper, it's gonna save it as what's known as a PDF file, which is a really great thing in certain situations like turning in papers um, to teachers by email or Google Classroom. But if I wanted to actually print it on paper, I would look for the name of my printer in the list by clicking on this arrow. And if I didn't see it, I could click on see more and then it will show me all the printers that it sees. And this printer right here is the one at my house. So I would choose that printer. I would choose how many copies I want of it. If I wanted to print all the pages or just a few of the pages or only maybe one page and whether I want it to be color or black and white. There are some other settings that you might use in the future. Usually don't have to worry about them. Okay. And then I would just click print. I don't actually want to print mine, so I'm not going to do that. But if you actually wanted to print it to paper, then you would click that blue print button. Okay, another way to get um, to the area where you can print is to click on file. And then it's always there on the file menu if you don't see it on the toolbar. All right, now, how can I start a new document? I could go to the file menu and do new document. 
and it automatically starts a new blank document for me. And remember, the very first thing I should do is change the name of it. But I don't actually want this one, so I'm going to close it. And I can close it by clicking on the little X in the tab. Okay. On uh, Microsoft Word or another word processor, you may see on the file menu an option in this area that says close, and that's how you could close your document. Let's say, though, that um, I wanted to work on this next week and I just closed my document a week has gone by and I want to reopen it so I'm back here in my clever portal I'll click Google Docs and instead of opening a new blank document or a document with a template I'm going to look at my list of recent documents and remember I named my file Google Docs demonstration and it's right there at the beginning of the recent documents. And voila, now I can reopen it and I can start typing more information into it. Okay, so that is all for now and we'll keep learning about word processing documents in the future but for now I just want you to practice those skills for the very basics of using the word processor.